Okay, all right. Okay, so we are going to get into the scriptures. I feel like I enjoy speaking about things that we need to speak about um, and all the things that we talked about up until this point. But I still always think that it's necessary to kind of go over, review um, the different significances of the days and times. Um, because I talked about earlier in a week about people being able to lead you astray. And I, and I said that in the context of being able to know and understand the things that you know and you understand. So I think that it's always important during these times to be able to rehearse the, uh, the different significances of the days. And then also in this case, um, relate the significance of the feast to what we've already uh, dealt with um, up until this point. So I want to go ahead and look at uh, Leviticus, uh, Vayikra, chapter 23, and read uh, 42 and 43. I'm going to talk about that for a little bit. There's well in booth for seven days, all who are native born in Israel, well, in booths, so that your generations know that I made the children of Israel dwell in booths. And when I brought them out of the land of Mitzrayim, I'm Yahweh Elohim. Okay, very good. So we see over there the fact that the Most High commands it in Leviticus 23, of course, has all of the uh, set apart times. And here it's giving you uh, the instructions for Sukkot. And it says over there, dwell, dwell. That word dwell actually is yashab, yashab, which means to sit down, right? To dwell, to sit down in booths, right? To remain in booths. To abide in booths. Uh, one of the things that it says over here for this word yeshab is uh, ambush and quiet, right? So if, if we if we was to, to to try to ambush somebody, we would kind of be we would be sitting down, kind of you know in the brushes, you know we would have our little spot uh, uh, plotted out, and we would just be there. Just waiting, right? And so that's kind of the idea that it has here when it talks about the idea of dwelling in booths. When we think about being somewhere and like what we're doing, we're <laughs> we out here dwelling in this place, right? We're abiding in this place. We're remaining in this place. So that's the thought behind what we're supposed to be doing in these uh, booths for this week. Right, and so when we look at this word over here, um, if we was to think about, if we was to think about the word pictures, you you have. I wish I, I wish I would have brought my whiteboard here, but if you think about the word pictures, yeshab is a yod, which is a which is like a, a little arm. I'm drawing it invisibly with a little hand. Right, it's an arm, which gives you that uh, you do your work and things with your arm. Right, if you don't have any arms, you maybe could do some work, but it's a little harder. Yeah, maybe, yeah. <laughs> right, so you so you do your work with your arms, and then and then your shab it has the sheen. So the sheen is those two front teeth looking things, right? And so when we think about the the sheen, you have the idea of pressing of pressing, right? And then the last word is the, the last letter is the bait, which is the 
floor plan of the tent. So it's a tent floor plan. So Yashab has an idea of working and pressing into the house or working or pressing to be uh, in the tent, right? And so, you know, that's kind of how I feel like I was working and pressing to be in the tent. I, I had my old tent and I had some issues with my tent, right? And then I had to work and press to, to actually get me a, a, a tent so that I could dwell in it. Right, even though we have our our wooden uh, temporary dwellings over there, it, it, it's nice. <laughs> he called it a hut. It's nice <laughs> to kind of have like and be like experience the elements. I don't know how nice it is. I think it feels authentic. I should say <laughs> when you uh, are experiencing uh, some hardships. And right, so when we think about um, Sukkot and the fact that um, Israel, the native born, was was commanded to dwell in the booths. The hardships is actually part of the situation, right? You dwell in this uncomfortable situation um, so that it causes you to think about the time in the wilderness. Right, so you're commanded to be in an uncomfortable setting, an uncomfortable situation to remind you of the uncomfortable setting and the uncomfortable situation that Israel was in coming out of Egypt, right? And so we're commanded to do this thing. That's why I don't really, I don't get bothered about talking about something that I probably already said a million times over and over again. Because as Israel, every year you sit up here and you have to do this same exact thing for however many thousands of years as it's been since Israel, Israel came out of Egypt. Right? So the Most High commands us to rehearse, to repeat these things over again so that we remember and gain knowledge and understanding from the experience of leaving Egypt, going to uh, the land. And so again, when we, when we do this, right, we, uh, 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 we remember these things over here. Okay, so when we think about, again, um, this word yeshab, this idea of turning, you're turning towards the tent, towards the tent with intent, right? Because it talks about pressing into the tent, right? So you're turning towards the tent with intent. We intentionally came to this place. We intentionally came to a place that it was hard for us to get here, right? There was, there was all types of obstacles in our way to get here, but we were intentionally coming here. So the things that tried to block us it was just things that was trying to block us. But we was getting here, right? And so in that word, that that word that, that uh, is translated as dwell, there's also intention involved, right? It's not like sometimes we go through things and the thing will kind of stop you from, from doing the next thing. And then you'll miss out on whatever it is that you was going. Sometimes things will get too hard. I'll just forget it. I'm not even going to do that right now because it's just this X, Y, Z happened and it's just I just don't even want to go through all of that. I was thinking that yesterday. Just around. Yeah, see, you you was ready to turn around. See, but we was intense. We was going to that place that we was going to with intention. We wanted to get there and we wanted to dwell there. So when we think about the idea of dwelling, the idea of getting there is also uh, incorporated in the dwelling. Right, that's why you, that's why I like how it has the word ambush, because if if I'm if I'm going to ambush, there's a whole plan involved. I got to figure out where I'm gonna be in a strategic location. Right, so we have that intention that's involved in the command to dwell in booths. Right, and so we should expect for it to be hard to get here. Right. 
it's just it's supposed to right the car is supposed to leak gasoline before you come to, to Sukkot right everything you thought you already had is supposed to be missing or ruined the day before Sukkot yeah these things are supposed to be right so when we know that these things are supposed to be you know we we uh, 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 we prepare for the thing that you can't prepare for we know that something bad is going to try to stop you, but there's nothing that you could do. You just got to keep on going. Expecting the, Inspecting the unexpected. Right? That's part of dwelling in the booths. You know that it's going to rain on your on your campfire. Right? You're just going to have to deal with it. You just got to do what you got to do to get around it. You know that is going to be hard so when we think about this now in in terms of being something that causes us to remember the wilderness and the wilderness experience of course being our life experience right our journey that we have on our way to the land it's the same thing we have in a, a, a goal that we're intentionally trying to get to and we already know built into the situation is problem. It's not going to be a, 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 a cakewalk from our spiritual Mitzrayim to the land. There's a big wilderness in between and there's, there's, there's nations, nations that don't want us to walk through their, their um, places in order to get there. That's trying to stop us. There's people coming up to our, from our back trying to kill us but we know that already because we're remembering what the what happened and then we're gaining a spiritual understanding that the same thing that happened to physical israel coming out of egypt happens to us from a physical and a spiritual perspective in our wilderness experience and so from a spiritual perspective, when we think about Sukkot and remembering Sukkot, problems is part of Sukkot. I can't think of adversity is part of Sukkot. And then again, when we think about wilderness, the wilderness experience being our uh, the thing that exemplifies our life, adversity is part of our life. Versity will take people out of here. They got so many problems, I just can't even do it anymore. I'm done. Yeah. Give up. Yeah. But when you already know that that's part of the thing, right, that should help you to understand that it's just part of the journey. It's not like just a happy little uh, walk. It's a, it's a rough walk that's hard. There's, 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 there's times when you got to go uphill. Sometimes you got to walk down a path that isn't a path. Mm -hmm. You're the first one down the path. You got to make it be a path, right? If somebody never, never tried it down this walkway over here, it wouldn't be there. But somebody got to do it, right? But again, that's part of the idea of dwelling in boots. You're in doing that, you're understanding that there is a lot that's going into it and adversity is part of it. I got a scripture here. Go ahead. It's Ecclesiasticus uh, chapter 2 and uh, 5. It says, For gold is tried in the fire and acceptable men in the furnace of adversity. Acceptable men. Acceptable men. And, and, and tried and uh, um, acceptable men in the furnace of adversity. Yes, very good. So when you think about that, then so unacceptable men, I would say the adverse is true. If that's true, then the opposite of that is also true. Unacceptable men then then go through no fire. They just had some just some regular old happy lives, right? Unacceptable men, but acceptable ones. Them ones is getting burnt. 
And all of that impurities is burning off of you. And that hurts. That hurts. When we looked, when we was over there at, 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 um, at the Yellowstone over there, we, we learned about the most interesting trees that when they, when forest fires come and burn up, that, that experience of the, of the tree getting burned allows for those cones to pop and the, and the seeds to come out for more stuff to grow. And so if, if, the, if the forest never catches on fire, the seeds could never pop and then the more trees could never grow. And so those trees is like unto these acceptable men that these scriptures are talking about. If you don't never have no fire, no adversity, how, how are you supposed to grow? You can't. How are you going to be able to even make it through adversity if you never been through no adversity? Yeah. And that's the way the Most High teaches us. He teaches us about things by... by uh, uh, on the job training. Yeah. That's how he works. He know he ain't, he's about the book learning. Right. He's about the book learning, but he's also about the on the job training. If you want to sit up here and talk about uh, you know my faith is weak and I need faith, he going to put you in a situation that's going to cause you to use some faith. And if you don't learn the first time, he gonna do it again <laughs> until you get it right. He gonna put you through the fire so that you can be acceptable, right? And this is a, 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 a an idea that we we gotta have this understanding and know that is coming. And this is how you learn, and this is how you grow. But he wants for us to learn and grow in this way because. He gives us this command to sit up here and rehearse this wilderness experience if if life is not enough, by the way. If life is not enough to cause you to think about hardships and adversities that you go through in order to get you to the other side refined, if life is not enough, then in the scriptures and the law of statutes and commands, he has for us this little built-in thing that we sit up here and do uh, to 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 cause us to learn these lessons. Okay, let's keep on going over here. Let's look at some other things over here. So 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 he said to in Leviticus twenty-three forty-two and forty-three, we talked about the idea of dwelling, intentionally being somewhere, intentionally going setting up shop, remaining, abo abiding, right, in the booth, right, in the, in the sukkah, right, which is a booth or a cottage or a pavilion or a tabernacle or, or a tent, right, so the word sukkah comes from the word that is trans, uh, that, that means hut, as of entwined bow. So you talk about the idea of making a tent, you know, putting a bunch of uh, uh, wood and things together, intertwining them, mixing them together, and making this tent, making this little layer, right? Yeah, various layers, right? And so um, Sukkot, Sukkot is the uh, Samek, which in the ancient is like a is like a thorn looking thing, right? It's a Samek. It's a uh, a Kuf, which is the which is the open palm, Sukkot, and the Tav at the end, right? Which is like a mark. So when we think about the word Sukkot, you have this thing that you have the palm that kind of holds things. And then you have the thorns, the thorns that kind of surround the thing that holds things where it's this thorn bush and the thorn bush keeps things from coming in, right? But it also keeps things from going out. 
So you have this protective layer that protects from the inside and from the from the outside. And then with the top is the mark. So you have a mark of this of this open hand that where there's protection on the outside and on the inside. And that's where we're supposed to dwell. We're supposed to dwell in this thing that has the mark of uh, a palm that holds us and protection that surrounds, that keeps us in and keeps stuff out, right? And so when we think about Sukkot in that way, the booth, right? The booth could be a picture of Yeshua, right? Who is, by the way, the hand of the Almighty, right? And who is, by the way, the one uh, upon which uh, we receive our protection, right? He protects us from things on the outside. He also protects us from doing things, right? So, so when we have that, we think about the, the word Sukkot in the word pictures, it of course gives us the idea of dwelling with Yeshua, which by the way, when we uh, by faith believe in Yeshua, what did he say in, uh, what did he say in John 14 and 23? Anyone loves me, he shall go my word, and my father shall love him. We shall come to him, and I'll make our stay with him. Exactly. We shall come to him and make our stay with him, or make our abode with him, or we'll remain with him, or we'll set up an ambush and lay in wait with him. Right? And so, Sukkot, of course even though we're thinking about going through the uh, the circumstances and the situations and the adversity of the wilderness, as we're there, Messiah is there with us, right? And Messiah is there protecting us from ourselves and he's protecting us from things around us. Good. I was, um, I was talking to you, uh... When you go back, like, you know, I mean, there's some, there's some, um, maybe there might be some feast or some circumstances where, you know, you might have to commute back and forth, like, you know, for school or for work or something like that. But it's not the same as just getting away from your normal everyday life. Yeah. Because when you go back, sometimes you might not make it back to the kitchen because mm -hmm. you want to get distracted. There might be something that comes up where you got to stay back, you know? Yeah. And so it's like about kind of like dwelling in that booth. is kind of like, you know, it's kind of like a mind that, you know, where you're away from all of that. Before, in the olden times, you didn't even have the, um, people, people would leave and people would come back and you wouldn't even know about what happened. Mm -hmm. Because we didn't have Wi-Fi. Like if we was up here before the pavilion had Wi-Fi, we wouldn't even know anything that was going on. Yeah. It's kind of like a time capsule when you come back down. Like, oh, that happened? Did you find out when we were in school when we got back down? Right, right. You wouldn't even know what was happening. Yeah. Exactly. And, and, and so, again, that's thinking about the idea of intention, right? We're intentionally coming to this place and intentionally getting ourselves into things that, you know, potentially are unforeseen, but we're just in it. And we worry about what's back over there when we get back over there, right? Because we want to intentionally um, uh, think about Spiritual Sukkot. We want to intentionally think about our our uh, protective barrier that we have in Yeshua. 
and the fact that he uh, provides for us uh, 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 that, that layer of protection from the spiritual elements, from the adversity that we know is coming, right? And so when we, when we you know, I've done, I've done it every way. I've not went anywhere and stayed back. I've, I've split it up where I, where I come, when I go back and forth and, you know, do what you gotta do, but you know, you just open yourself up for distraction. We want to leave the distraction behind. The distraction is going to be there when we get back. Uh, we have to go through, I think, these times of kind of these concentrated times um, where we kind of build ourselves up to get ready to go back. Because again, where the wilderness is our life experience. And so we're, we're always in the wilderness. So there's always going to be adversity. And so we, we need these times to, to kind of uh, 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 be encouraged and, and, and prepare ourselves, you know, to go back and do the things, right? So, okay, so let's keep on going over here. And so let's go over to Deuteronomy 8, 2 through 6. Let's read that. Yes, Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 2 through 6. And you shall remember that Yahweh your Elohim led you all the way these 40 years in the wilderness to humble you, prove you, to know what is in your heart, whether you go in his commandments or not. And he humbled you and let you uh, suffer, and let, and let you suffer hunger and fed you with manna, uh, which you did not know, nor did your fathers know, to make you know that man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes out of the mouth of Yahweh. Your garments uh, did not wear out on you, nor did your foot swell these forty years. Uh, thus shall you know in your heart that as a man uh, Disciplines his son, so Yahweh your Elohim disciplines you. Therefore, you shall guard the commands of Yahweh your Elohim to walk in his ways and to fear him. Okay, very good. So we see over here there was a purpose for the wilderness experience. There was a purpose for the wilderness experience. That purpose was to humble you, to prove you, and to know what was in your heart. That was some of that. Uh, fire that we were talking about. What kind of man was it again? An a suitable man. Acceptable. Acceptable man, right? And so, the Most High wanted to make sure that Israel was was acceptable, and He did that by way of humbling the people, proving the people, and checking what was in their hearts. But why did he do it? Because he did it as a father to Israel. Because he loved Israel. So again, we think about the wilderness experience that's hard. There's adversity. There's things that, that come against us. There's things that separate and try to kill us. But guess what? He's not trying to kill you. He's trying to make you better. He's trying to make you stronger. Right? If, if he let you sit up here and get away with all of your foolishness, <laughs> That would be true that that would be proof that he didn't even love you. If he let you get away with all of this stuff, that would show you that he don't love you. But instead, he don't let you get away with your foolishness. Instead, he chastises you. Instead, he disciplines you. Instead, he proves you. Instead, he humbles you. Instead, he does instead he does things to know what's in your heart. The most I want to know where your heart is. He want to know where your heart is. So he's going to have things happen where your heart going to be tested. Right? We talked about this a little bit yesterday, right? There's things that's going to happen in your life where your heart going to be tested. Which one you going to choose? 
I like one of them choose your own adventure books. You ever read them back in the day? Uh -huh. Choose your own adventure books. You sit up there and read through it and you can pick which 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 um path you want to take. Yeah. I think goosebumps is like Well this I'm talking about pre goosebumps. I don't even know what that is, goosebumps. So, oh yeah, the Oregon trail. <laughs> so 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 the Mosai do that. He gonna give you these choices that you gonna have to make. And you can make the right choice or you can make the wrong choice. If you make the wrong choice, sometimes the story ends. <laughs> and then sometimes you gotta make three other choices to get back to where you should have been at if you would have made the wrong choice three steps ago. Yeah. And so, and so the Most High is going to have us go through these things doing a little heart check on us. Right? And so again, when we memorialize the time in the wilderness, or when we think about the fact that the wilderness is that uh, uh, that time that exemplifies our life, again, these are things that we should be expecting. Heart checks, humbling experiences, things that prove us, things that, that let the Most High the most I know where you are anyway. The things that let you know that you are moving in the way that the most I will have for you to be going. Because you're being proven. You're being humble. Parts of you is getting burned up. Right? And you're being transformed and changing and growing. Right? If, if you go year to year and you in the same place where you was a couple years ago, then you got problems. Not that you didn't get no humbling or you didn't get no uh, uh, proving or you didn't get no hard checks, but you ain't allow those three things to actually um, work in your life. Because those things came, you just chose the wrong answer in the choose your own adventure thing, right? You chose the wrong answer, then you didn't grow. You did the easy thing, the easy thing don't hurt, right? I don't want the easy way. I want I want the hard way. I want the hard, the, the way that's going to cause me to learn about a thing, right? And so, again, when we think about Sukkot, that's what Sukkot kind of, it, it's a picture of those things, right? I want to sit out here and, and have my, my nose be freezing to death in my <laughs> sleeping bag. The rest of me feel all right, but my face is like freezing cold, right? Cause I, you know, I got a good sleeping bag. You know what I'm saying? I, I prepared that way. But, but you can't have your face covered up. You can't breathe. I'm sitting up underneath of my my sleeping bag, trying to breathe hot air into my sleeping bag so that I could be warm. But I chose to do that. I can easily get up and go under where the heat is. But I chose to go through the adversity on purpose because it's a picture of what this life is for us, right? We, we, we can't sit up here and try to escape the thing that the Most High wants to do for us because he wants to cause us to be better, right? He, he wants for us to understand that he is our father and he's going to put us through things that's going to make us better. It's going to make us stronger. It's it going to, go ahead, go ahead. I was going to say, it reminds me of the game a little bit on Shoots and Ladders. How a decision could either, like, truly advance you in the game or set you back. Yeah, yeah. And it's, yeah, it's just, yeah. but staying in the tent, that decision is something that will propel you forward. Right, uh, right. Else. Because you got to endure. This thing is about the one who endures to the end. And endurance, I don't understand endurance that's easy. Do you? That's not endurance. That's just like waiting or something. I think like endure means to like suffer. I think. Probably. It got to. If it don't, it should. <laughs> yeah. Let me see if, I can pull it up. <laughs> if it don't mean that, it should. Yeah, let's, let's see. But to me, when I think about endurance, I think about something like I think about <sighs> the, the, the the, the finish lines is way over there and I gotta get there. I can't really get there, but I gotta get there. Not like 
That's not either. That's not enduring <laughs> to the thing. Like just making it just endurance. Like I'm trying. I'm giving everything that I got in order to get this. Is what I think endurance is. Good. Nice and loud. Oh yeah, um, to, to stay under, behind, that is remain figuratively to undergo, to bear trials, have fortitude, persevere, mm, abide, persevere. Mm. Um, endure, take patiently, mm. suffer, carry behind. Yeah, when you think about taking, when you think about patience, Patience is waiting with a particular attitude, right? Patience is waiting with a particular attitude. When you're, when you're anticipating a positive outcome, when you're waiting patiently. I know it's gonna eventually get there, but I'm just gonna wait until it gets there, patience, right? But, but so so there's waiting involved and there's choices that got to be uh, made in the waiting. Because as I'm waiting patiently for my uh, positive outcome to happen, um, there's, there's things that's going to happen in between time. That I got to keep on waiting in spite of these things that's going on. And so... Sukkot teaches that teaches us this and so also what you like what you talking about um the Torah in terms of you know the back and forth and having to go back to reality um you know the most high gives us these things not for us to only remember while we're here but to but to remember these things when we do go back to reality when we're able to implement these things that we have rehearsed you know, throughout our time. And, and and that becomes an adversity. Because as far as the fee cycles go, we're at the end of the fee cycle. So we got to make it all the way back to the springtime. We got to make it through this cold winter that's about to come. Right? All the way back to the springtime. We got to take all of these things that, that we that we uh that are, are that you know the place where our mind is now we got to have this be the thing that carries us through the time of of winter and deadness like everything's still green and stuff now starting to change but it's stuff is about to die and we're going to be compacted down with coldness and snow and we're only just have a remembrance of these wonderful um, sceneries and things. But we know that it's coming, then, right? And so we just have to be able to, to endure until we get there. But again, we learn all of these things, we rehearse all of these things with um, Sukkot. Go ahead. Yeah. 
Right. We have to allow these times to do what they've been uh, created to do, and that is to grow us. That is to cause us to, uh, uh, you know, be better than, you know, before. Um, okay, let's look at a couple more things. I don't want to talk too long here. We, we want to uh, look over here at, uh, let's go to, um, look at 2 Corinthians chapter 4. And start reading at verse number eight. Because we know that the Most High through the wilderness kept Israel. Right? We read that. He, they sat up there and they went through them in 40 years. And and it says that, let's see. Where's that at over there where it says he humbled them, he fed you. Oh, verse four. The garments didn't wear out. For 40, Hiskey got up here and he had some old garments. <laughs> and them things wore out. Them the shoes, shoes wore out. them shoes that I let him use probably was as old as he is. <laughs> them things wore out. But over here, right, look, it said, your garments did not wear out, nor did your feet swell for 40 years. Right? And so the Most High kept Israel through the wilderness. So we need to understand that Yeshua as our Sukkot, he keeps us through our wilderness. What does that say over there in 2 yeah. yeah. Corinthians 4, 8? Being hard pressed on every side, but not crushed. Being perplexed, but not in despair. I'll keep on going. Uh, being persecuted, but not forsaken. Being thrown down, but not destroyed. Mm -hmm. Always bearing about in the body of the dying of the master Yeshua, uh, that the life of Yeshua might also be manifested in our body. For we, the living, always delivered to death for the sake of Yeshua, that the life of Yeshua might also be manifested in our mortal flesh, for that death indeed is working in us, but the life in you. But having the same spirit of belief according to that which has been written, I believe, therefore I spoke. Uh, we also believe, therefore we also speak, knowing that he who raised up the master, Yeshua, shall also raise us up to Yeshua and shall present, present us with you for all that is for your sake. So the, that favor, having spread through the many, will cause thanksgiving to overflow unto the esteem of Elohim. Therefore, we do not lose heart, but even if our outward man is perishing, the inward man is being renewed day by day. For the slight uh, momentary pressure is working for us as a far more exceeding and everlasting weight of esteem we are not looking on what is seen, but what is not seen. For what is seen passes away, but what is not seen is everlasting. Okay, very good. So we see over there um, a whole bunch of things going on over here. But when we see over here, we see, as, we, as we're saying, these things hard pressed on every side, it says, but not crushed. Right? Being perplexed, but not in despair, right? Being persecuted, but not forsaken, right? Being thrown down, but not destroyed. This is what we expect. We expect these things to happen, but not to our destruction, but to our betterment, right? Because even if, even if it says over here, talking about the, these things, to your physical body therefore it says in verse 16 therefore we do not lose heart but even if our outward man is perishing the inward man is being renewed day by day right you think about again that that stomach which is that thorn that protects on the outside and on the inside 
on the inside is what this is talking about. You have that spiritual inward protection and growth that's giving you borders, that's keeping you inside a, a, a certain lane, right? Where you are from uh, inward, from your inward man being renewed, right? Being restored, being strengthened day by day. So just like physical Israel went through the wilderness and the Most High led them through the wilderness, so does Yeshua lead us through the wilderness and he strengthens us and he grows us when we put our trust in him. So when we think about the way that the people was tested and the way that they were proved in the wilderness, that's what we go through in our wilderness. When we get to that place where like how we talked about all of these things that we see going on, right? We talked about all the things that we see going on, um, you know, in our reality, right? And we talk about the the fact that our faith, you know, really needs to grow because of all the things that's going on in the world today. And because of all the things that we uh, potentially could be facing um, sooner rather than later. Right. When we go back, when we go back to our situations, we we can't even afford to be the same that we was when we went when we came because we already talked about the fact that it's about to get worse so whatever things that we um gain from this experience we don't have a choice but to to use those things to cause us to be able to move forward because we already know that that times are changing Right? And so when we think about that, you know, we we it, it, it becomes imperative for us to take our Sukkot mindset and, and and transfer that back to our reality. We have to take our Sukkot mindset and, and that has to actually be our reality. So that we're ready for the adversity that we talked about already. We talked about the adversity. We know adversity is coming. So we have to have our, we got to take our Sukkot mindset outside of Sukkot. And that got to be our situation because they setting up all types of things over there for us. And if we don't strengthen the faith that's been, that's already been planted inside of us, we're not going to be able to endure. So we can just think about the things that we rehearsed as we was here, right? We start our day with, with, with some type of um, dedication and devotion to the Almighty. Right? That's a great thing to do for Sukkot. It's a greater thing for you to do every single day of your life. Right? Because we know that we're going back to adversity. We know we're going back to times that are troubling. Right? It's a great thing for us to come together and to and to have um, kind of uh, comprehensive thoughts about the scriptures uh, every day during Sukkot. But it's a greater thing to have that be something that you do every day. Because, right, the more word, faith comes by hearing the word, right? And so the more that you engross yourself in the word, the more that your faith increases, the more that you're able to endure. And we already know that more is coming for us to endure. We come up here and we remove ourselves from distraction. We know where the distraction is. We know what the dis the distraction is. We know what we gotta do 
to remove the, res the distraction from our life. And we see the results of what can happen when we do remove the distraction for, from our lives. But how much more so when we when we are able to get to a place and know and understand that things is about to get worse out here and we don't have the, uh, 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 the luxury of keeping the distractions in our lives. We must remove the distractions so that we're able to um, have uh, uh, a, a stronger dedication to devotion um, starting your day and, and, and have a greater uh, uh, intention on getting into the word every day and we and we must have a greater uh, uh, intention on removing uh, distractions from our lives so that we can readily be uh, uh, prepared from a spiritual perspective what's coming down the pipe because it's coming down the pipe it's just like Sukkot. We know that there's problems going to be. We know that there's going to be adversities that's coming. And we talked about all types of adversities that we know is coming. And so uh, 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 it, 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 it's, it's foolish for us not to, to take um, these, these little tidbits and, and, and cause these things to be kind of seeds for growth when we already know that we about to go into this storm mm -hmm. right if you know it's raining you're going to take your umbrella that's what we talking about over here spiritual umbrella yeah. you know you're going to a battle where your vest at yeah. this is the vest we talking about over here removing distraction getting more wording causing yourself to, 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 to um, have more devotion and dedication time to the most high forcing yourself to do it because we know that it's about to get crazy and if and and if we don't prepare ourselves from a spiritual perspective we're not going to be ready uh, for what's what's coming okay so let's just end up with uh let's see here uh hebrews 10 and um hold on what i have over here? let's look at that two more two more scriptures nahum nahum uh chapter one two through seven so he who breaks in pieces has come up before your face guard the rampart uh, watch the way. Strengthen your loins. Fortify your power very Hold on, what much. verse did you start with? One first chapter, first chapter, second verse. Wait, what first chapter? First chapter, yeah. Oh, my God. Okay. One and two. Right. Well, first chapter, second verse, through seven. Two through seven. Yahweh is, is jealous and uh, revenging El. Avenger and a possessor of wrath. Yah takes vengeance on his adversary and watches for his enemies. Yah is patient uh, and great in power, but by no means leaves unpunished. Uh, Yah has his way in the whirlwind and in the storm, and the clouds are the dust of his feet. He is re rebuking the sea and dries it up. All the floods he has made dry. Bashan and Carmel uh, are withering. The flower of Lebanon is languishing. Mountains have shaken before him, and the hills have melted. The earth is lifted up in his, in his presence, in the world, and all who dwell in it. Who does not stand before his, it says, who does not stand before his rage? Up in the heat of his displeasure, his wrath is poured out like fire. The rocks have been broken by him. God is good as a stronghold in the day of distress, and he knows 
those who take refuge in him. Okay, very good. That verse 7 is what we wanted to deal with, the fact that Yahweh is good as a stronghold in the day of distress, and he knows those who take refuge in him. And, and what I'm saying is, is that we have to learn to a greater degree to take that refuge in him so that we can take advantage of the fact that he is a stronghold in the day of distress. We know that day of distress is coming. And we know that he's able to be that stronghold for us in that day of distress if we take our refuge in him. If we, if we dwell in his Sukkot all of the time, right? Same thing. Because if not, we're going to get caught up in the thing that he didn't even make for us. We're going to get caught up in it, right? Because our faith is going to end up getting shook and we're going we gonna to fall by the wayside. Right, so we got to build up the things that he's put inside of us and use those things for our betterment and understanding again that endurance is necessary because times is getting rough. But he didn't leave us out here comfortless. He left us with his Ruach HaKodesh to lead us and guide us, to grow us and, and push us in right direction okay so that's what we want to kind of think about you know we, when we get out of this place is that we want to be able to allow we want to minimize our distractions right in our lives we want to increase the, the our input in, in a word that we put inside of us right and we want to increase you know our time of uh, and dedication to the Almighty to properly prepare ourselves for, you know, what we've read <laughs> over and over again, what we know um, the Most High is doing. Okay, anybody have any thoughts or questions or comments? Oh, I did. Um, Hebrews 10. He wants some more. He didn't even want me to stop. Hebrews 10. 22 through 25. That is right. <laughs> it says, uh, let us draw near with the true heart and completeness to belief, having our heart sprinkled from the wicked, from a wicked conscience. And our bodies washed with clean water. It says, let us hold fast uh, the confession of our expectation without yielding. Uh, for he who promised is trustworthy. And let us be concerned for one another in order to stir up love and good works. Uh, not forsaking the assembly of ourselves together uh, as as is the habit of some but encouraging and so much more as you see the day coming near yeah the day as yeah. you see the day um we was probably if that was written uh, in today's um vernacular that probably have like some parentheses because it's talking about the day that we've been talking about as we see the drawing near we need one another to be able to encourage each other, mm. right? It says, not forsaking the assembly of ourselves together as is a habit of some, right? We need to be encouraging each other and, and recognizing the fact that, again, the Most High is trustworthy. He promised to be trustworthy. We're the ones that fall off in our trustworthiness. But what we're talking about is building up those things inside of us, doing those things on your own more than what you already been doing, and then each other and hey, you've been uh, you've been up on your thing, 
you been you been you been increasing your um situation because it's about to get hard out here you got your spiritual bug out bag together your spiritual one you need that physical one too but you need that spiritual one too and packing it full of stuff that stuff is faith that comes by the word right and so understanding that these things is true the fact that we have Yeshua who cleanses us, right? He's that, that clean water that washes our bodies, right? Removing us and, and cleansing our hearts, right? And so, and so, you know, this is really our task um, that, that, that gets us through the winter, right? I mean, we're going to not forsake assembling ourselves and see each other every Shabbat. But I'm saying within our own personal situations, we got Shabbat. Plus, we got those other six days where we got to kind of have our Sukkot, our individual Sukkots, causing us and strengthening us to make it through the day that we know is coming near. Yeah. know how to do it. Okay, so that being said, that's that's where we at. That's what we want to do. That's what we want to be at. We want to keep on with this, with this um, keeping on, and we want to keep on growing and and and, and learning, and, and we want to keep on um, um, binding um, ourselves together and, and binding ourselves to uh, Messiah, preparing for the day, right? Okay. All right. Hallelujah. Yeah.